Okay, sorry about getting cut off there. Let's try this again. We'll start on another one. <coughs> Belly down. <coughs> Then I'm going to tilt the angle to close the gap from the aluminum to the seat, which there's a line here. Let me see if I can show you. Okay. Now you can see the little line. The line is your marker once again, and I'm going to dig into the aluminum to the iron. Then, once I see the line disappear, I'm going to roll back. Then when you take your finger, guess what? The blue area is the point. You can feel that razor sharp point right there, but there is no line that you can visually see except where the transformation of the iron to the aluminum goes. All right, now that all the aluminum grinding is done, I want to take a minute to show you something. Let's pick off of the seat area, just where the seat is, okay? Now, let's go to the next port. I mean, they're just right there with each other. Maybe a, a touch different, not hardly at all. But notice what happens when we start to go down. It locks. It just absolutely will not go. When we take the snap and let it go, close it, come back, let's look at the area where the little line is. Almost identical. Now the important thing to see here, look dimensionally speaking, the measurement we just pulled is the measurement off of where the aluminum is the tightest which is 1.734. Once again so you can see it live like Memorex. Boom right there and then just right there where the hump is. Now when we go down in there and lock on and release it, this is setting on the guide, which remember the guide should be pretty close. Okay, let's take a look at this measurement. And what we got here is one eight fifty seven, one eight fifty eight. So wow, down here at the guide, it's big. We come up to the part where the aluminum, where we was cutting it with our carbide and it left the overhang, 1.734 uh, I think is what we ended up with. Well, 1728 1, this time, a couple of thousands. But then, we come up here to the seat, which is the area that we've been grinding on, trying to pull it in, and watch what this dimension is. This is where it gets kind of tricky. Right there, right below the 60 degree angle, 1786 near 1800. So, the area right here in the bowl at the part where it locks into the guide starts to come up is looky there it's just right being is almost the size now with the seat that we got that GM put in there it's not a big width seat because they intended it for a 194 valve so coming in right there the reason it's a little bigger I intentionally did that that's why I put the tubes in it because of one major reason. Right here, the area from the tip of that guide to the short turn is considered a pinch point. Since I can't get the height because of the port, I can grab the width. I'm grabbing it wide. I'm giving it some room to slow down as that air comes hauling ass in there at 690 feet per second. Then, just like a turn on a street, 
if if a four if a turn is rated at 60 miles an hour and you cannot go any faster than 60 miles an hour, what do you have to do? If you keep going over 60, it goes around the turn and crashes. So we got to slow down, and right here's the point where it's slowing down, because we got to turn it. We got to have that bowl. It starts to expand, so it slows down a little bit, but then it's starting to tighten back up just a touch as it starts to get ready to exit the bowl. The whole purpose of this, as you can see, is so that we don't let the fuel fall out of suspension turning into liquid droplets. Now we're going to get some because it's got a bowl and because uh, we'll get more into uh, raised runner heights and all that later but basically we're trying to keep the fuel in suspended animation to where when it's coming out getting ready to go around the valve it's not turning into a liquid drop form that's why we have to have a little bit wider bowl and then close it. Now, had I not went in there and ground on that seat a little bit to pull it in to blend with the aluminum, guess what we would have had? Big, small, big, small. It'd be like going 100 miles an hour, hitting the brakes, and then trying to come back into speed again. And we all know that's just not going to work. At least with this transition, with what I've done to the seat, we got one pinch point right there, then it starts to blend and expand back out. I'll show you when I get through with the bowl when it's totally done as you look at the rates. All right, let's get back into it. I went ahead and switched to the big giant bird just to make a swoop. This is just pulling it in and <coughs> excuse me, leveling. And look what I got. Okay. I snapped it at about the biggest point, which is going to be our little screw twist right there. Look what a transition I got. Now, I have got some touch-up to do. I'll do that with the smaller one. But watch what happens when I try to go in here. Once again, look at the reflection of the light. Look how dark it is in there. And this ain't just a reflection of aluminum. It's also a reflection of the port light, of the light being able to shine on areas hidden. See, look at here. Look what's happening to the snap. I pull up here. Boom. Look, it has to go all the way down. Now watch. I come in here and pow. It's actually... See? So... This is just the roughing. I pulled it in. I'll go back in there and finesse. This is one of the pickup points. Remember our pickup points on a stage four. The bowl, the short turn, the area uh, back here. Let's get out a little expanded view. The width of the wall at the push rod bulge, point one. Point two. The short turn height from the short turn, it would be in here from the seat to the top. That's pickup point two. Pickup point three is the bowl area, probably somewhere around here. Now on the stage four for this guy, because I'm right close to being a stage five, I'm probably going to give him one more pickup point. What about a pickup point here and then a pickup point right here? And say about 900 down so you'd have the guide 900 down the short turn and then finally up here the width of the push rod bulge I go with four points right there guess what happens when I CC the port the consistency is going to be extremely close I know I'm going to be passing about the same amount of fuel and air while it's not perfect once again, it goes into time and money constraints. But with four pickup points, I'm going to go out on a limb here, and I'm going to say within a no more than one cc and a half or 1.5 cc's consistency from intake to intake all the way down the road. That is pretty good. Even if I said, okay, two cc's, I don't like that. Two cc's does not jive with me. I can live with a cc and a half. With four pickup points, that's what I'm going to get. Okay, I'm going to go ahead right now. 
rough in the bowls, go in for my final blending, and then we're going to get ready to put the epoxy in the tubes, and I'll switch to my straight cutter, because also, while I got this, uh, before I switch, I'm going to hit the bowls on the exhaust, pull all them in, I'm going to do the final rough blending with this on intake and exhaust, then I'll switch to the smaller egg and then the finger. So let's ride this horse on out and get this to Tom Keish up there. And so that man will be one happy turkey bird. All right. I thought I'd show you this side. Remember the grinding we done on the seat? Look at our dark area. Now it's not as dominant as the long turn side. Uh, the short turn was a whole lot closer in meeting the relationship. But let's go ahead. I always start the top letting it down. Then I start applying more pressure as I turn around. The corner. Now I'm starting to put more pressure and pull it in. Then I pull back and let it dance. Then I take my finger and feel it. Do I feel a transition? Yeah. There's now just a touch of the iron. Which, <laughs> as if what I've done isn't enough, get a load of this. When I'm done, what I just did, and blending the bowls, I have to take the iron cutter and go back in here one final time and let it dance just right on the very seam where the aluminum touches the iron. So this carbide is going to dance right there on the seam and then I'll go to a stone and let it barely swoop and touch and then it will have the absolute perfect transition rolling right off into it. It is a lot of trouble going back and forth, and that's just this part of it. What about the shop top part of the short term? This is what separates the men from the boys. That is an abrupt 90 degree angle. How do I get this to roll all the way to the top? Um, I'll go over it. All it takes is time of rotating ahead in two different positions, back and forth, back and forth. But mainly for this episode, what I wanted to show was how I took the big carbide, uh, pulled it in, the area where I ground into the seat, and then the big cuttings over, the bowls, everything, uh, the next transition and the final conclusion of the cylinder head will be the final touches, the minute blending, slamming the tube in, and then blending the couple of areas for cosmetics. Okay, I might add, so far at this point, I've got a total of 52 hours in the ports, chambers, and exhaust in ten and a half hours and the guides in the valve job. So we're somewhere around 63 to 64 hours total work. Usually a set like this takes 70 man hours to lay in and that's just with four pickup points. Alright, anyway, back on to the rest of it. Let's take a look at an exhaust so you can see how I do that. Remember, same situation right here. Look at the dark. I'll start at the top. Notice how once I come to here, how I kind of back off. That's because of that uh, sharp edge of the iron. The aluminum cuts so much quicker. Just barely enter pressure, and it'll take 10, 20 thousandths off, whereas the iron would probably only take about three or four. I think I'm going to make a ratio chart in the bowl area, and in this area here showing the amount of pressure removing X amount of aluminum equals removing X amount of iron, so that it gives you an idea of how easy aluminum is when you're cutting to dig, and then when you touch iron, it protrudes. Um, there is a ratio between the two. I know it by feel, but I'll figure out a way, math, to show you so that you know that when you're 
in this area of transition, man, you got to watch it. You got to ease up on it and pull back. Like I said, I'm going to have to go in here with an iron cutter and go right at the seam and roll it and then stone it to get it where you can't feel this big obtrusion because that's just so amateur and so much polish and bullshit and they always say don't remove the radius because if you do that and remove a radius well 85 percent of x amount will make it not flow that my friend is a big time vst velocity scare tactic that is exactly what that is it is a bullshit way for them having to get out of doing what I'm doing right now because of the time involved. Lots of VSTs out here and lots of people who are BSTs. Anyway, back to it later.